Okay, welcome back physics 30s to our next lesson. And in this lesson, we're gonna be completing a two-dimensional collision lab. Okay, so in this lesson, you're gonna be looking at completing a lab of a two-dimensional collision. The collision is going to occur on this air table between these two pucks or masses. The reason that we're using this air table is to try and remove as much friction as possible. How the air trap works is that there's a hose hooked up to the puck and it's going to have a pump that is going to pump air in and through the puck towards the table. This is going to create a kind of cushion of air that the puck's going to float on top of. So if we push the puck in one direction, it should continue to move in that direction at a constant velocity. And so we're going to use this track to collide those two masses and then measure if momentum is conserved. And how we're going to measure the movement of these two masses is with a spark timer. The spark timer makes sparks in between the puck and the table at a consistent rate. It's set at 50 hertz, which means 50 cycles or 50 sparks per second. This animation is a bit simple, but it gets the idea across that as the puck moves, it's going to be constantly setting these sparks down to the piece of paper below. And next we flip over that paper and on the underside, we can see the marks that the sparker made on the paper as the puck moved. And we can use these dots to determine the velocity at which the pucks were moving. We can first just look at them to figure out the angles, but we can also determine how fast they're going. We can look at the displacement between the sparks, and then we also have information about the time based off of the rate that it was sparking, the 50 hertz. So then with information about displacement and time, we can calculate our velocity with v is equal to d over t. Okay, so now that we know how the equipment works, let's complete our experiment. The first thing that we need to know is the masses of these pucks, which are 522.7 and 529.2 grams. Next, with the air track and the spark timer on, we push the two masses, release them at a constant velocity, and have them collide. Next, for our analysis, we'll look at those incoming lines and the outgoing lines and try and find the point at which the collision occurred. Next, at each of these collision points, we need to draw lines that are parallel to each other so that we're measuring angles in reference to the same plane. So for this, I measured consistent distances from the bottom of the page to get these two parallel lines, and now we can measure our angles. Next, to determine our velocity, we're gonna look at four dots or three intervals of sparks and measure the distance between those four dots. As mentioned before, now we can use that displacement and compare it to the time elapsed in those three sparks to figure out how fast they were going. Okay, so now to look at the results from the experiment, uh, we can see these dots showing the collision between the two pucks. On the right-hand side here, it was the 522.7 gram mass. It came in at an angle of 46 degrees and left at an angle of 66.5 degrees. We also can see that in three intervals of sparks, it covered two centimeters on its way in and 1.8 centimeters on the way out. If you're wondering why the sparks of one puck are so far away from the other puck, it's because they're fairly large and they're sparking from the center. So if this was an image of the pucks, we can see sparking in the middle and sparking in the middle, but this is where their edges collided. To look at the other puck, the 529.2 gram puck, it came in at 51 degrees. And what we're trying to solve for the first part of this lab is when it leaves the collision, what is the angle and what is the velocity? That's going to be the first question in the lab and probably the biggest focus of it and it's, as it's going to require the most work. Uh, afterwards, there's a comparison to the experimental values, which I'll give you, and then also trying to determine if it's elastic or not. But that's the idea for the experiment, so I hope that makes sense for you. Good luck with the lab and I'll see you in the next video.